Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is episode 27. Today we finally have the much requested Ingersoll Rand 2235Ti Max. You sort of can't have a channel comparing tools like these tools without the 2235 in our opinion. Like carbon fiber for F1 cars and fuel ejection for road cars, this IR accelerated impact wrenches into sort of the modern horsepower wars that we have today between brands with 1,000 1,400, 1,600, and even now 1,700 foot-pounds of pixie dust torque from a half-inch rattle gun. So today we're going to do her justice by strapping her on the dyno to see how she competes against the latest and greatest on the market, then at the end of this video tally its points on our leaderboard to see where it ranks. There were some new surprises on this one, so stick around and enjoy. On this channel we test modern power tools versus old school torque ratings. Essentially assuming your father's impact wrench made an honest 450 foot-pounds, what do modern impacts really make compared to that? Manufacturers admit there's really no way to compare torque ratings, so in a world where brands are now advertising 1,715 foot-pounds on a half-inch impact, this is our attempt at leveling the playing field. It won't disprove the brand's ratings, but it will allow us to actually compare power levels across brands for the first time. If you're curious how this testing rig was made or the airline's fittings and pressure we use, please see episode 1 where that's discussed. This 2235Ti Max is a model that's been around for at least 12 years now but that hasn't hurt its popularity in the slightest. When we purchased it, it was currently, and still is, the best-selling air impact wrench on Amazon. That's pretty impressive given its price. At $270, while it may not be the newest tech, it certainly ranks up there on price, at least for impacts that you don't have to step onto a tool truck to buy. Yeah, it's also assembled in the USA, so maybe that has something to do with it. Nevertheless, compared to the latest models we've been looking at, it's quite old and also pretty costly, yet as I said, still a bestseller. We're here to find out if one of the reasons it is a bestseller is its power, something we can help answer for you at least. That popularity over the years has resulted in this 2235Ti Max being the impact you compare to if you want to call another impact wrench powerful. Well, is that impact as powerful as a 2235? People want to know. It seems like half the head-to-head -head battles we see online are between other air impacts and this one may have taken us 27 episodes, but hey, we got there, right? The 2235Ti Max advertises an enormous 900 foot-pounds forward torque, 930 foot-pounds max reverse torque, and 1,350 foot-pounds nut-busting torque. Definitely some modern-looking figures when it comes to power, even in our bunch. But one detail that's a bit of a holdover from days past is its size. At 7.7 .7 inches long, She'll make a old school 231H pretty jealous, and it's noticeably longer than the other contemporary impacts that are sort of based on this platform. Although still well shy of something like a Milwaukee 8.4 inch long high torque. Today we'll be comparing it to that Milwaukee high torque because it's the best performing cordless we've tested yet, and the Mako MT2779 because it performs super high for an air impact across the board and because so many people still think that IR makes Matco guns, even for the last two generations, which are made by PTP. So let's jump into it. This is forward working torque, which is the first test of three. We'll show the Milwaukee first. So maybe showing its age here and as far as design goes, between 12 and 20% down in power here in this heavy hitting group. But few people brag about forward torque even though the IR did advertise 900. So let's hop into our max torque test which is 10 seconds reverse. We're going to add in the Aircat 1250K here to compare to for reasons we'll explain in a minute.
So both the Aircat and IR get out an early head start here, but soon reeled in by the M18 and Mako by the four second mark. Ultimately both making around 100 foot pounds less than the two above them. Our next test will be the 15 second best case scenario test, which really blows things out of the water when done at high pressure. So hold tight for a minute to see that. But the reason adding the 1250K here was so interesting to us is this popular comparison video made by the dry erase board guy we all know and love on Daniel's industry standard Skidmore Wellhem machine. And A, yes, the numbers are sky high as usual, which the brands love and B, no, you can't really measure nut busting anyways. But assuming for a second, our test process is comparable, just for a second, look at the power difference. The Aircat here, made 1.2% in his video, more than the 235. And in our test, we just performed at the manufacturer recommended 90 PSI running pressure. The Aircat here made 1.28% more than IR, basically about the same. We're not suggesting this makes our dyno a skid more because we don't really want it to be anyways, but we feel this does highlight the potential validity of our testing, even if the numbers themselves aren't the eye-catching variety that would encourage a lot of sponsors or brands sending us samples, which we sort of like. On to the 15 second best case scenario test. As a reminder, this BCS test is done at 150 PSI static pressure. So this 2235 Ti Max is an absolute high pressure beast. It went from being on par with the 1250K to taking the top spot in this test. At 10 seconds, at 15 seconds, damn near everywhere. The way this thing wakes up from additional air pressure is like the opposite of a Mako gun. The Mako gun makes similar power at 10 seconds with 90 PSI as it does at 15 seconds with 150 static, which is sort of impressive in itself. But this IR gun, if you own this gun, crank that pressure up, and we're only talking like 30 PSI extra here, as 90 PSI dynamic does not mean the line pressure said 90 PSI before you pulled the trigger. And pretend like we never showed you this, but we did also test it at 165 PSI, and it made even more power, enough to even surpass the South Main Auto Mystery Gun uh, when it was used with a 3 8 line. And it didn't seem to care either. These TI guns are known for lasting a long time, so if you own this gun, we say send her the beans. That said, let's see how many beans she does make on the ranking and how many points. So here's our full size rank list. We recently started adding weights, so that's shown here for you guys. And then it's power figures gets turned into points, so 462 becomes 46 points, and then 618 becomes 62, and then it's super high, 780 foot pounds that it made with higher pressure becomes 78 points, which is very good. It's 7.7 .7 inch length is pretty long, but still made 780, so that's 101.3, which is very high in the category. And then 930 foot-pounds, it's pretty up there as far as advertising, but it made a lot of power in its high-pressure test, so that's 84% of that claim. And then 270 is also pretty high up there in price, but not quite like Snap-on Maco price. So that equals 43.3 points in the value score. So what is that total, and how does it rank? That makes for 414.6 points, or fourth place, which is pretty decent. It outranks the Mako in this case, probably mainly due to price, but it's one of the highest air impacts and probably the highest air impact we'd recommend buying at this point. Pretty good place for an impact this old. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up, some stuff we've been working on the last few months, so stick around, subscribe, and thanks for watching.